Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> the Cooper and Anthony Show. These people are obviously total lunatics. <laughs> Muy comico. You are a game player. You're a gamer. You love the gaming. Mm-hmm. What you got? Betty White was born in 1922. Sliced bread was invented in 1928. Therefore, sliced bread is the greatest thing since Betty White. Right. She's older than... that. You had to eat a whole loaf when she was born. You couldn't have (laughs) just a slice. There was no sandwiches. They went, what a sandwich is. I just want a sam. You couldn't get a sandwich. They didn't make. No, them. no. Th- there were sandwiches. It just you were allowed to cut bread in your own kitchen. That was fine. But anyway, so that was that's a meme that everybody knows, and people post it every year on her birthday. And now that she died, everybody posted that. Mm-hmm. So I was thinking, huh? Well, okay. So now we know that Betty White is older than bread or sliced bread. Right. So I thought we can play a game: younger or older than Betty White. All right. So I have to go before or after 1922. Television. Betty White is much older. Television came out in the 30s. Technically 1925. Mm. Yeah. Television came out in 1925. Maybe it's also kind of like computers where just because something came out doesn't mean it's in your home yet. So television came out in 1925. It didn't hit everybody's homes until much later. Yeah, exactly, because it was way too expensive before that. But it was out in 1925. Mm -hmm. Uh, The electric toaster. Well, it had to be. She's got to be older because they didn't have sliced bread. (laughs) So if you can't have sliced bread, you can't have a toaster. It's really hard to put a whole loaf in a toaster. It's weird. Okay, this one is weird because the electric toaster is actually older than Betty White. The electric toaster was invented in 1909, but you're right. So what were they putting in it? Somebody's going to say, why don't you toast that? And they, they don't know what toast is. How about the vacuum cleaner? Is the vacuum cleaner older or younger than Betty White? That had to be an 1800s thing. I mean, uh, for close. you, for you, it was 20 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> for everybody else, it was like the 1800s. That's a good point. I just discovered, I just discovered the vacuum cleaner. But everybody else discovered it in 1907, so you are mm. correct. It is older than Betty White. How about the traffic signal? I'm going to say that was pre-Betty White. It's younger than Betty White, just by a year, though. So Betty White was born, and then within a year, we had traffic signals. Yeah, so 1921, traffic lights came out. 23, go the other way. Uh, Oh, so she's actually older. She's older. People didn't stop back then. They just kept going. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yep. Mm-hmm. I think they had uh, people there saying stop and that kind of thing. But once they got the traffic signals up in 1923, it was much better. Okay. Uh, how about the refrigerator? Are we talking icebox or okay, let's refrigerator? Say, no, let's say not icebox because icebox were, was around in like, right. you know, the 1700s, the 1800s, whatever. I don't even know how long. Um, no, refrigerator as we know them today, the electric refrigerator that you plug in like the Amana and it's got the freezer. Yeah, uh, she's older. Uh, no, the refrigerator is old. The refrigerator, as we know it, was invented in 1913. Huh. Yeah. I thought that was a 30s, 40s thing. Yeah, no. Mm-mm. Okay, how about deodorant? Oof. Uh, well, there's still places that it doesn't exist now, uh, like the J-Train. Um, right, exactly. <laughs> the J-Train and Williamsburg. Uh-huh. But the rest of us. Yeah, I. Uh, she's older. Deodorant started in 1888. Huh. I know. Crazy, right? How about this one? Hostess Twinkies. Oh, she's older than Twinkies. Uh, That's correct. Hostess Twinkies, younger, 1930. She's not that much (laughs) older, (laughs) by the way. Yeah, but for the first eight years of her life, she didn't have Twinkies or sliced bread. Oh, but you're right. She didn't have Twinkies until she was like eight or nine. That's Oh, wow. Yeah, I got a couple more for you. Uh, how about penicillin? Penicillin was uh, earlier than that. No, penicillin is younger. Penicillin was readily available and invented in 1928. Re- so she had a sore throat and she couldn't eat Twinkies because there was no penicillin. Yeah, it was tough for her. Huh. Uh, and and uh, how about this? Taxi cabs. 
that has to be older. It is. Taxi cabs are older. At least yeah. you can get around in taxi cabs. Those started in 1907. Yeah, they just didn't uh, stop because there was no street lights. Right. <laughs> <laughs> they just kept going. <laughs> they just kept going and going and going. Yeah. Betty White was in the back of them going, what the hell? Yeah. Um, how about the NFL? Um, she's older than the NFL, but not baseball. The NFL is two years older than Betty White. Mm -hmm. The NFL officially was started in 1920 and Betty White was born in 1922. So the NFL NFL is older. The NFL is older. The NFL had been around for two years when Betty White was born. Wow. Yeah. Uh, How about Scotch tape? She's older. Correct. Scotch tape is younger than Betty White. It was invented in 1929. How about bicycles? <laughs> bicycles were like 1800s because remember they had the big wheel? They That's had right. the one big tire yeah. <laughs> exactly. and then a small yeah. tire. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Bicycles from the 1800s. The bicycles are much older than Betty White. Uh, here's your last two animal crackers. Those are older. Those were 1800s. What? I'm impressed. Yeah, 1871. Mm-hmm. I think yeah. they even say it on the box. Oh, since since 1871. Yeah, something like that. Who is older, Betty White or Bubblegum? Betty White. That's correct. Bubblegum is younger. Bubblegum was started and invented and became a product available to us in 1928. Ladies and gentlemen, may I present to you and Anthony show the 20 most watched TV shows of 2021 and I bet you've seen I think you've seen most of these maybe two you haven't yeah, seen that's because I don't have it yeah I don't have a job that's why you know I was thinking about this just today I was thinking about how much TV I watch and I was like wow once I start working again who, who's gonna watch these shows for me you st- you're still gonna people with jobs can still yeah. watch TV. You, you have never worked longer than maybe five hours in a row. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, when I did morning radio, I was home in time to watch everything. You're right. You were home by <laughs> 9 a.m. <laughs> True. So, right. That's so a good you point. Don't, you, <laughs> yeah. you don't string many hours together. <laughs> right. You, you do in your head, but physically yeah. at the job, not many hours goes into any of your jobs since yeah. uh waitressing and working at stop and shop you really haven't worked more than four hours at a time yeah that's in my very first radio job i had three jobs within one so that was the only one that i didn't watch it was funny i missed a lot of tv those years like in the late 90s people were like oh remember this movie no i don't i was working 90 hours a week i was starting my radio career no i don't know that show Right, but now you're still going to find time to watch Netflix. Thank so, God. <laughs> <laughs> number 20 on the list, most watched TV shows of last year, Virgin River. Yeah, I, I got through the first two seasons of that, and then I got bored. Yeah, there's th- there's three seasons, so you didn't watch the last one, I guess. I didn't watch the last season. I I had trouble getting through the second season because it was just so predictable and it was so, it was weird. It was on Netflix, mm-hmm. but it was very network television. You know, like they don't want to use curse words, and if they are about to have sex, they quickly cut to something else. You don't actually watch the they sex. Show ha- their legs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Even though it's Netflix, it's like you have at it. But no, they they kept it very very tame, and I found that really boring. <laughs> Number eighteen, Bridgerton. Oh, of course. Everybody watched Bridgerton. Yeah, uh, except me. I can't I can't with that. Number 14, Ted Lasso, and I know you have a problem with that show. So we'll just I love the first season. Mm-hmm. The second season opens with them killing a dog. No. Uh-uh. You've lost my business. Did they kill the dog on purpose or was it an accident? No, what happens is there's a dog for no reason on the field, and a guy kicks the ball right into the dog's head and kills the dog dead on the spot. It's just it wasn't necessary. There was it's just bad writing. Oh, so they're filling time with the wrong right. thing. Uh, with the dead dog, yeah, yeah, you don't like that. Number twelve, The Crown. Four oh, loved seasons the cr- of that shit. Yeah, I I mean I devoured that. I that was for Four me seasons? The Crown. Yep. Oh, yeah. Are you kidding me? We would stay up. We would be holding our eyes open and be like, one more episode. 
Uh, it's five in the morning. I was like, no, we should go to sleep. One more episode. <laughs> uh, number ten, Loki. Uh, yeah, I'm not a I'm, I'm not a Loki fan. Yeah, you're not a Disney Plus fan. Uh, number nine, Sex Education. That was my favorite show. Three seasons of that. Hang on, I didn't just watch all three seasons. I rewatched all three seasons. Oh, you went back. Oh yeah, I've seen Sex Education all three seasons twice. That good. Oh, I'm going to go back and watch it a third time. Mm, that no, good. I guess I, yeah. Am I going to like it or I'm going to Yes, hate. you're going to love it. Yeah, uh, the music is great. The characters are great. Um, the acting, the storyline. You'll see a lot of actors that you'll recognize. They're boobies? Sex education. Yeah, Tons of man. sex. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, let, let a naked, like, let a nakedity. Uh, number seven, The Handmaid's Tale. Yep. Didn't miss an episode of that either. Yeah, uh, four seasons, 46 episodes of that crap, so you can go back and watch it. These are the top TV shows of 2021. Next, WandaVision. Only one season on Disney. You have. I don't have Disney, it. so yeah, yeah. no. Yeah. You, you don't don't, got, you don't know, got Disney. You know nothing about that. Number three, Squid Game. Oh, well, of course. Yeah, but that's number three. Number two, which I, I want to watch, but I don't know if it's any good, Money Heist. Okay, so Money Heist. Money Heist is challenging. The very first season is fantastic. By the second season, it's all been done. I found it really, I, I wasn't interested. I watched the first episode of the second season. I was like, that's it, I'm out. Number one, most watched TV show of 2021, Lucifer. I watched the first season of that. So um, Tom Ellison, the the, the, the lead guy mm. in Lucifer, is a very famous actor in England. He's really sexy and he's just, oh my God, he's, ama he's a really, really good actor. I, Lucifer was okay. I just, for me, it was a little predictable. I feel like I've seen, I've seen that storyline many times before. It felt like an updated Buffy to me. Right. But um, no, people love it. I am telling you right now, if you're a TV watcher and you have HBO Max, The Sex Lives of College Girls is the you best. I'm going to keep beating this drum. It is not only the best thing that Mindy Colling has ever written. It is one of the best TV shows of that genre of what 20-something, late teen, early 20-something-year-old girls are going through. It is phenomenal. You love that show. You, you love. love that show more than Sex Education? Ooh. No. Oh, okay. This is just a filthy figment of my diseased imagination. It's Cooper and Anthony. I know you've heard about this story, and I want to break down sports ball for you because you don't understand sports ball, and I know... Is it going to make my head hurt? No, it's, 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 it's things... It's combining things we like. <sighs> okay. Quitting on the job. Right oh. in the middle of the job. We like that. Ooh. So, a player on Tampa yesterday, Antonio Brown, just quit halfway through the game. Wait, he was in the middle of playing a sports ball game, and he just quit in the middle of the sports ball game? Just said, screw it. Took his shirt off, <laughs> took everything off, <laughs> threw it in the crowd, and said, screw you, I'm out of here. <gasps> Epic quit. So this is f during the Jets game. So you got to love it when it's a Jets game because mm -hmm. the Jets fans are just going to lay it on you. Was it in New York? It was in New York. Oh, oh so good. What are you doing? You taking off your uniform, you dummy? Oh, because we're winning the game, you asshole. <laughs> oh, you fucking baby, you. Look at this fucking asshole. <laughs> Keep your fucking pants on, motherfucker. This is a family-friendly event. Get the fuck out of here, man. J-E-T-S. Jet, jet, jet. Look at this dummy. Keep your fucking clothes on. What the... Wait a minute. Is that my wedding night video? <laughs> you loser. Yes, oh, it is. You fuck you. <laughs> no. Wait, go ahead and play that again. I think that's my wedding night video. I think Take somehow you've got your wires you crossed dummy. here. Cause we're winning the game, you asshole! Oh, you fucking baby, you! <laughs> this fucking asshole! Hey. Yep. Hey, keep your fucking pants on, motherfucker! <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's my 
ex-husband. That's Daddy, Sean Lee. Daddy. I knew I knew that voice. <laughs> He was saying Jets, Jets, Jets. Yeah, well, he's a yeah, he's a big New York uh, sports fan. Keep your fucking clothes on. What the? Yep, that's my that's my wedding night right there. You loser! Oh, you fuck you! Yep, yeah, that was it. Maybe twenty minutes later, Tampa went on the 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 news and said, "Dude's fired, gone." Wow. We have we don't want anything to do with him anymore. And it's not like he wasn't a fantastic player. He was a fantastic player. Like he, so why did he do it? What happened? Well, they still don't know. They haven't breaking it down. But the thing is, is this guy's a prick. So oh. he's a big time prick. And Terry Bradshaw is getting crap today because he was on TV going, this dude is crazy. Put him in a straitjacket. So people are, right. are toasting Terry for that. But. The dude is crazy. I mean, he's he's clinic. He, I mean, he's insane. Um, he was on the cover of of Madden Football. I mean, he's a big time player. Mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. he needed like seven more yards to make three hundred thousand bucks. He needed one more touchdown to make another three hundred thousand bucks, and they pulled him out of the game. Wow! And he just said, "That's it. I'm out of here." Oh, I didn't realize they get paid for what they do on the field. Yeah, if it's built into your contract. Okay, if you come wow. to Tampa, if you make 800 yards this season, we'll give you a million bucks. So he was, you know, three yards away from making a million bucks, and they Ugh. said, we're, we're taking you out of the game. Just wow. Because he's a big-time prick. I wonder, I mean, is it mental illness? Did he get hit in the head? Does he have, a, what's it called, CTE? I mean, is, is he have a, what is it? So I went back because... When it happened, I told my son, my son was like, well, he's, he's gone. He's never coming back. Wow. Nobody's ever going to hire him again. So I was like, how can this guy be that big of an asshole to get fired, quit in the middle of the game, and, mm. and be that good at football and not get a game, not get a team ever again? And right. Sports Illustrated came out with a, in 2019, they came out with a whole list of things this guy is done and it goes on for pages. <gasps> what? And Are you serious? And it's all at women. <gasps> it's uh forcibly raping women. I mean this Oh dude, wait a minute. Hang on a minute. So he forcibly raped a woman and they continue to let him play? That's a problem. And he's a prick. No, no, okay, yeah, he could be a prick, but he raped somebody and the NFL didn't fire him for that? Yeah, I mean, this is 2019. This is this is happening, and teams were still hiring the guy. Oh my god! And I mean, this goes on for. I'm I'm going through pages and pages and pages. This is not one girl, two girls, three girls, and this isn't some rag. This is Sports Illustrated. Right, right. This is a shocking this. story. So the guy he he went to an art thing at one point. I read a story where he went into an art museum. They were selling paintings uh, to benefit children and women. And there was a painting of him. So Mm -hmm. he didn't want to bet on it. He just said, go ahead and give it to me. I'll give you 700 bucks. Uh, So he put 700 bucks on it. He won the painting. He got the painting, never paid the lady. That sucks, but it's not rape. No, no, no. I'm not done. (laughs) Oh, sorry. (laughs) So he called her and said, can you come come over and do a mural of my wall? Because I like how you're, and I'll pay you for that last money, and I'll give you another three grand. Come over and paint my wall. She said, it'll take like three days. She said, fine. So the first day she goes there, makes her a little bit uncomfortable. She's all right. Second day he come, she comes there. She looks up. His cock is in her face. <gasps> He's naked, cock in the face. Ugh. So she got up and left and didn't come back. So then he took photos of all the painting she did and didn't finish and blasted her on Instagram. Oh, no. And she is now coming out and talking about it. She didn't come out and talk about it then. But she's come. I mean, it's just story after story after story about this guy. Yeah, because women are afraid to report powerful men being sexually inappropriate with them because they're the ones that end up getting, um, you know, they get fucked up for it. 
like the guys it, look i mean look at look at ray rice you, you know look how long it took them to finally release him from his contract after he beat his wife on video i mean the nfl and fans stand by their players no matter what you can't read all the stories of the things this guy did and for terry bradshaw to say one little thing and get destroyed it's like no this guy's an asshole he might have a mental issue but he's not a nice he's guy. He's an entitled asshole, right? No, when we hear these stories all the time about these powerful men who think that they can, that women are just uh, objects and they can do whatever they want. No, fuck him. Yes, I'm, some... I'm glad. I'm glad they fired him. I'm glad he'll never work again. Then I said, okay, well, the guy took his clothes off, ran off the field. Then you realize you're in New Jersey. <laughs> and, you, <laughs> and you live in Tampa. So then you go, ah, oh, crap. I just, <laughs> my clothes are in there. It's, it's January in New Jersey. Yeah. What was oh, I thinking? I'm not yeah. even in, in New York. <laughs> I'm, I'm in New Jersey without a shirt on. Do it again. It's the Cooper and Anthony Show. All right, I want to know what your predictions are for 2022. I'm going to give you a couple of <laughs> topics, and you tell me what you predict will happen in these scenarios, okay? Who's Pete Davidson going to date after Kim Kardashian? Uh, another Kardashian. <laughs> Chloe. <laughs> <laughs> no, those sisters never do that. That's the weird thing. They never, ever share men, which I think is so interesting because it seems impossible because there's only four of them. There's only like a handful of men that they'll date, but yet they don't share men. So it's not going to be a Kardashian. I don't. I don't think there's anybody left. Uh, has to be somebody super famous, super hot. It's going to be either Billie Eilish or Miley Cyrus. Okay, it's not Billie Eilish. That okay, ain't gonna Miley happen. Cyrus. Miley, maybe, but Taylor Swift is she, if she breaks up with that guy. No, I think I think Taylor and. Uh, Joe, all in, uh, going all the way. I think I think that's her boo. Okay, so I think maybe Megan Fox will dump Machine Gun Kelly no, and end up old. with Pete Davidson. She's too, too old. old for him. Too old. Yeah. No, she's a, she's about the same age as Kim Kardashian. Mm. No, actually, sorry, she's younger. Megan Fox is thirty five. Kim Kardashian is f in her forties. I don't know. G going from Kim to Megan Fox. Is a lateral move. He needs right. he needs to move up. Who's hotter than Kim Kardashian? Yeah, I don't know. That's why I'm saying I don't know where he goes from here. It's got to be somebody that comes out of nowhere. How about this? What will be Amazon's next big thing? So you know how Amazon um, they came up with Prime, and then they started making their own television. They had Amazon Studios, and they're producing their own stuff. And then they have the Amazon Go. You know, you could just walk in and you scan it. You just take what you want to eat. You just scan it on your way out. What's their next big thing? Radio. I think they're already doing that. No, they're going to do it right. And they're going to come out with radio with podcasts built into it. It's all going to be about creative content in a different way. And free. Right. So it's going to be the next step that destroys radio. Like the prime version of radio, like you pay a monthly subscription or a yearly subscription, you get all the radio you want? Yeah, for the, no, I think it's going to come with your prime membership, kind of like, oh. kind of like TV. So Sirius and Satellite have, have, has already proven that you're willing to pay a little bit for the mm -hmm. right content, but if mm -hmm. it already comes to you and you have unlimited minutes on your phone, and it's free because you have Prime, game over. I was thinking Amazon's next big, th big thing is going to be an Amazon airline. Airlines are dead. But again, that's why Amazon would do it, because they love to take something that's dead and bring it to life. I mean, if you think about it, when... They revolutionize online shopping. They revolutionize app TV. I mean... It, Netflix up their game because of Prime. I think the next step in transportation anyway is going to be trains. So, because they're already talking about bullet trains now, how much faster and cheaper they are getting from point to point in in Asian countries. They, right. they, they can 
move the same amount of distance and less time than flying now because you don't have to deal with all the airport shit. You don't have to deal with snow and issues like that. I mean, there's another 10,000 flights canceled today. Right, the, people right. are going to get sick of this crap. And, yeah, and then trains point. are going to start being more electric. It's just, it's going to be the next thing. All right. What celebrity couple you think is going to get divorced this year? Ryan Reynolds. Oh, you think he's going to, he's going to get divorced? Really? Yeah. yeah. I don't think so. I don't think I only because it, to me, it seems like he and Blake Lively have this amazing marriage. That's why it's going to be, it's going to blow you away. Oh, 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 oh. That's because I didn't see that coming. And, right, he, and, right, right. And he's going to go with a Kardashian or something. I mean, Deadpool 3 is going to come out, which is going to be huge. And then he's got every movie anywhere. He's heartbroken off be, uh, over Betty White. So right, that's a good point. So God only knows where he could go. I think that... Please be Travis Scott. Oh, you think Travis Scott and... Uh, they ain't going to make it. Kyla Jenner ain't going to make it? They ain't going to make it. Uh, I think they've had a very hard year. I think they have a lot of challenges. I mean, they have two kids now, so... Mm-hmm. Yeah, so will that make it more stressful th- for them, or will that be the thing that, you know gets them there forever i don't know it's hard to say yeah that that's a tough one i don't think olivia munn and john mulaney are going to be together in a year from now and i i think i, I don't care oh <laughs> fine. okay how about this? maybe you care about this one between you and i which one of us will make the biggest purchase this year me yeah it's always you yeah it's just uh... yeah you no, buy houses know. and cars I'm, yeah i i don't think in 2022 i I have anything to buy. You might. No, I mean, unless it's a, a motorcycle and I'm I'm not buying another one of those, so. You'll have a reason to get a car, I'm sure. No, I just bought a car. I got a 2022. Oh. So it's going to so be. So you already, you already made a big purchase. But that was last year. I bought it a year before <laughs> it came. So, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm carred out unless I, I knock on wood, I, I wreck a car maybe, but. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I I can't buy any more houses. Can't. <laughs> yeah, I'm out of parking spots. So you're pretty. I'll, I'll go with you. <laughs> you think I'll I'll make a big purchase this year? Okay. Yeah, you can buy another, new shoes. That that could be a big purchase. Well, my, if I buy shoes, it, it will be a big purchase. There's a yeah. pair of boots I saw. I want. They're twelve hundred dollars. <laughs> I know, but you find a way <laughs> to buy some technology or something or some microphone that's two thousand dollars. Like you, I'm still going with you. I'm still I mean, paying you, this one off. Well, that's what I'm saying. And when I'm done paying for it, it you, you don't buy another one. It's not like shoes; they don't go out. Well, I know that's what I'm saying. But you've already made. You bought a house. You bought a car. You bought an expensive right. microphone. You know, not me. I mean, the most expensive thing I bought. I, you know, I bought some salmon the other day. <laughs> I was like, wow, this shit's expensive. I put it on a payment. (laughs) Can I pay off the salmon over time? Three payments of $10.25. Good. See, what is this? Sounds like something I heard before. It's the Cooper and Anthony Show. Now, I love this story. And the reason I'm telling you this story is because I can relate to this woman. There's a woman in Sweden, of course, because these things never happen in America. Well, they probably do, but they they have other things to to cover other than stories like that. I would imagine that's what it is, but I'm suspicious that perhaps it uh, is not really a true story. Okay. I'm always a little dubious when it happens in Sweden, you know, or someplace far away that we can't go check. Mm. But but let's say this actually happened in Sweden, because I love the story. So you tell me what you think. So this woman in Sweden, she claims that she is addicted to Coke, not cocaine. (laughs) Oh. Coca-Cola. I understand. Coca-Cola. And she went to her healthcare people and she said, you know, the treatment you're giving me is not enough. I need to be in a special addiction program. To get off of it? Yeah. I need to be like in a special treatment center, you know, as if I'm on alcohol, as if this is an alcoholism thing, as if it's actual cocaine. I am addicted to Coca-Cola. And if you don't help me, my health is going to suffer. So the court said... That's crazy. We have a healthcare system. Go use the healthcare system. Do what you got to do. But, you know, stop drinking Coca-Cola. Well, it didn't work. So she went back again and she and the appeals court 
actually ordered a special addiction treatment clinic for her to go to. That her habits, that her drinking habits have led to emergency hospitalization for diabetes and high blood pressure. Right. They have to treat her addiction to Coca-Cola. <laughs> like, how many is she drinking a day? Thousands. Thousands a day. Well, not thousands, but, you know, she's, you know, see, that's the interesting thing. It doesn't say how much she's drinking. They don't report how much, but I'm assuming it's a lot. I'm assuming it's a problem, and I'm assuming she can't stop. Well, I can feel her pain. I, I drink a lot of soda. You and like I, your Mountain Dew, don't I you? I love the Mountain Dew, and I don't know if I'm addicted to it or not. But I, I can't go a day without having it, so I guess I am addicted to it. Well, they say that the, with addiction, it's not how much or how often, it's the consequences. So if you're, you know, there's people that are functional alcoholics, meaning that they drink plenty of alcohol, yet they function just fine. They go to work. There's not a lot of consequences. So can you call them alcoholic? You know, they do drink a lot. Mm -hmm. So it's the same thing here where it's more about the consequences. She has put herself in a situation where she has diabetes and high blood pressure and she has to be, she had to go to the emergency room to be hospitalized. So that's a consequence. That's not somebody who's enjoying a little Mountain Dew now and again. She's enjoying a lot of Mountain Dew every now and again. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's a problem. So even if it's a liter a day or a six-pack a day, which might not seem like a lot, it might be too much for her. See, I gave up Mountain Dew or all soda for Lent one year. <laughs> yeah. How'd that go? <laughs> nah, not too well. Yeah, I wouldn't think so. How uh, many hours did you make it? I made it the whole the whole way. I made it to Easter. You did? I made it to Easter. Did you substitute something else instead? Mm, no, I didn't have any soda at all. I but think you I had, ca- tea. You had caffeine though. You'd, you'd coffee and stuff, right? I think the only thing I had was coffee and tea. That was it. But no soft drinks at all. No Sprite, no Coke, no Mountain Dew, no anything. Now, why that? Why did you choose to give up soda? Why soda? To see if I could do it. Is and I really went the whole way. I don't yeah. think that's what Lent is about, frankly. I think it is. I think it's about sacrifice, but okay. But that, yeah, no, it was a big sacrifice <laughs> it's not, it's because not I did about it. personal goals. It's not about, <laughs> let me see if I can run five miles or not. <laughs> but I did it. I mean, that's I, I made it through, so I guess I'm not addicted to it, but I don't think I've went a day without drinking at least two or three since then. Did you have withdrawal symptoms? Did you have headaches and stuff like yes. that? Oh, well, that's not good. That could be a problem, <laughs> frankly. <laughs> See, I don't know when it becomes a problem, but I'm going through this now where I think there should be a treatment plan for anyone's addiction to anything. I think we're, you know, we're in a culture now. People are addicted to stuff that may not register on the list of, you know, maybe it's not drugs, maybe it's not alcohol, but I have a new addiction. And I think it's an addiction because I can't stop. Oh. I've tried and I can't. Shoes, no. That's well, old. shoes Shoes are definitely a problem. There's right. no question shoes are a problem. And the reason why shoes are a problem because the consequence is I don't have any money. Mm-hmm. So, you know, if I wasn't spending on my shoes, I could probably, you know, afford the other things in the world. So, so the shoe thing is definitely a problem, but I have a much more pressing issue. The French toast thing. Now, if you remember last week, I was instructing my husband how to make the French toast like I like it. So that way when I got home... I would have French toast. I was only home for like 20 minutes. I wanted to have my French toast and then go. I'm at a point now where I'm eating French toast two, possibly three times a day. But you're eating it with that, that Hoochieberg bread. Yeah. Yeah. The challah bread. Challah bread. Challah. Yeah. yeah. Two to three times a day? It's, it's, yeah. It's whole wheat challah bread. As soon as I discovered it and discovered how good the French toast is with it, I crave it all the time. I had it for breakfast and lunch today. And I'll probably go home and have for dinner tonight, frankly, because now I'm talking about it and I want some more. Now, you, you eat it with the eggs and a lot of syrup on it, which can't be good. No. I looked at that. You know, I fe- the syrup is maple. It's organic. How bad could it be? It's 300 calories for like a little tiny dollop of it. So I have, I have about like 2,000 <laughs> calories a meal. Yeah, why not? Per plate. Per plate. And you can't get the light. <laughs> A syrup because it just tastes like crap. Tastes like crap, yeah. yeah no and and I like a lot of syrup. I like that thing to just be swimming and drowning, asking for help. Now, now do you drown it and then go get more syrup later? Every piece has to be completely covered in syrup. Wow. So there's a system, too. But it's, yeah, I have a problem now. I have a problem. I mean, there should be a treatment plan for my addiction to French toast, I feel. Like, I wish there was a place I can go and sit down and say, and there was a study done recently, I was trying to find it, but there was a study done recently where they were saying that people that have sugar addictions, that it's not so dissimilar to someone having a heroin addiction. 
that the way sugar affects your brain for some people is the way that it affects, that drugs would affect your brain. You put the powdered so, sugar on top of the French toast? I did till I ran out, and now I eat it without it. I've cut that, so, <laughs> so no. <laughs> but in a perfect world, yes. <laughs> at the minute, at, currently at the moment, no. But yeah, it, it, I would like that very much. Um, so, so what are you addicted to? What, what's an addiction that you have that there really should be a special treatment plan just for you? Or somebody you know, somebody you love, somebody in your, in your life. 8776 Cooper. Hey, Rocky. Hello, Cooper. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Now, do you have an addiction? What was that? Do you have, do you have a strange addiction? You know, I, w- I was very addicted to coffee. Like, without coffee, I could not just survive. Uh-huh. So then, um, five, six years back, I, I got pregnant. Mm-hmm. I had a, a boy, but I stopped drinking completely, like just the tea. So then when I wanted to drink, mm-hmm. the coffee would smell like a poop. <laughs> <laughs> so, now, is that a pregnancy thing that, that your know, your hormones like, changed? I, I don't know. Like the, the, the baby was already born and I'm changing the diaper and everything going on, right? Uh-huh. But the, as soon as I drink coffee, it would smell like a poop. <laughs> I completely stopped drinking coffee for five years, and now this is my sixth year. Like my my son is going to be six, and now also sometimes if I drink coffee, it smells like a poop. So I just I just stopped drinking. I gotta say that's brilliant because Rocky, here's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking if I get some baby's diaper and put it next to French toast, my French toast, I'll start to associate the French toast with poop, and I'll stop eating it. <laughs> I gotta tell you, you should. I'm not even kidding. You should run an addiction specialist, like a clinic kind of thing. I'd come. <laughs> I think and it's a brilliant just idea. Bring all the dirty diapers to the studio. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, get rid of your diaper, Jeannie. Just bring it. Bring it to the addiction, the treatment clinic. Right. And sit it down with all the addicts. That's a good idea. <laughs> I think it's a great idea. <laughs> Do you want this shot of whiskey, or it's right next to poop? <laughs> okay, taste the shot of whiskey, now smell the poop. Taste the shot, smell the poop. You know, I got to tell you, this theory is based on that, like how to train dogs. Like, that's the whole idea that, you you know, you make an association. And I wonder if you can make an association with poop and the thing you're trying to get off of. I wonder if then you could, you'll could stop eating it. That makes sense. I know. Worked for her. I think she's brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Rocky. Hi, Kitty. Hi. Hi, there's your sound effect. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> now, what have you been addicted to that there should be a treatment plan for you? Television and TiVo. Mm. Oh, yeah. That. Now, why do you think you're addicted as opposed to somebody like us that just likes to watch it? Because I watch it almost every minute that I'm at home. And um, even at work, I have a small business. Um, I, I have the TV on and watch it when I read a book and I I, I, I do the same thing. Is this a, is this a pro- are you saying this is a problem? Because I didn't recognize this is a problem, frankly. Well, um, the, well, the only two times that I went even a day without watching television mm-hmm. was I was in a thing, kind of like a Big Brother house, and uh-huh. then when Hurricane Hugo hit. Other than that, I've watched TV every day of my life. <laughs> when you didn't have power, that's the only reason. <laughs> right, why that's you didn't the only time. Power, that is the only reason. So. <laughs> And, uh, and so if there was a special treatment center for you, would you go and try to, to not get off TV completely, but to wean yourself off a little to watch less? Yes, definitely. Mm-hmm. I need to do more things. Now, if we gave you a choice to give up food for a day or TiVo for a day, which one would you pick? Probably food. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. I hear you, girl. As Absolutely, as I Kitty. Drink water, yeah. Even my four-year-old, when we go on vacation, he is like, he doesn't watch TV all the time, but he's used to the TiVo, and he doesn't understand why when we're in the mountains, his shows are not on when he wants to watch them. Right. Yeah, <laughs> I understand. I feel his pain. I When you go somewhere else that doesn't have TiVo. Yeah. How do I, how do I watch this? Why would you? Why would you ever go somewhere without TiVo? That's what I don't understand, Kitty. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Kitty. Thank you. Um, okay, so if, if there was a treatment plan for your addiction, what's your addiction they should have a treatment plan for? 877 cooper Hi, Tim. Hey, how's it going? Tim, what is your what is your addiction? Uh, first off, I'll say I guess I'm a hypocrite for it now because I was making fun of my brother-in-law 
two months ago before Christmas. Mm-hmm. Call of Duty 5 on PlayStation 3. Oh, now, my husband's addicted to one. Is that one of the games you can play with somebody else that's like in another country somewhere? Yeah, you go online on your PlayStation, you play it, yeah. Yeah. And you play, you pay, play people from, you know, I found some actually some people from Charlotte as well there. Mm-hmm. But, you know, just, I guess I'm addicted. And I told him, I was like, you know, that's, that's an addiction, man. You, you can't stop playing it. And he got it for me for Christmas. Uh-huh. Well, then I started playing it and I can't <laughs> stop. And you said an addiction is a result. You can kind of tell because you have consequences. Right. Well, well, I, I don't spend time with my wife and daughter. Mm. So that's a consequence. And right. I say I'm at work and so whatever. And <laughs> they, and then no. I And I are you are you at work thinking about wanting to play Call of Duty? Yes, and then when I don't go to bed until two or three o'clock in the morning and I have to wake up at five thirty to go to work, I'm tired all day thinking about if I'm gonna be able to get to play it at night. Right. And then it's just a it's a vicious cycle. It starts over and over and over. What does your wife say though, if, if when you're not coming to bed at two or three o'clock in the morning? Well, she's reading. So she's laying in bed reading, and then she reads until she falls asleep. So maybe she's addicted to reading books. Yeah, she's addicted to books. She's got a problem, too. Right. Yeah, so we're not talking anyways because she's reading, so I'll right. play a video game. <laughs> what a great couple. And she goes to sleep. <laughs> yeah, that's, 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 that's pretty close right there. <laughs> Tim, you guys are not so different than us. That sh- Look for Sean Lee on, on the PlayStation, by the way, because I'm sure he's there. That's him in the Shoot corner. Him. Yep, and I'm sitting there watching my TiVo. So that's yeah, our relationship. That's- that's what we should do. I'll, I'll go to like a web page and get his name on PlayStation 3. That way we can do it. Oh, trust me. He's on there. You'll find him. You probably already played against him. Yeah, you've shot him in yeah, the head. Yeah, I'm sure you have. And what's so funny is he, Sean Lee and I will be on the same couch. Oh. <laughs> and, I, and he'll be with the PlayStation. He's got, he's got the PSP. And I'll be, you know, watching my TiVo. Well, at least I've, you're together. She's in bed. He's in the other room playing the video game. They're yeah, not even true. in the same room. At least yeah, you're well, on at least the, same we're in the same couch. room. Right. Yeah, we're in the same room ignoring each other. Well, we you'd have well to be in, in the same rooms. room. You only have a one room apartment. <laughs> exactly, like we have a choice. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what should there be a treatment plan for? What are you addicted to that there really should be a treat- pl- treatment plan for you? 8776 Cooper. Hey, Adair. Hey. Now, what do you like a lot that maybe you should get, in a tre- get into treatment for? We just fish the candy. <gasps> Oh, yeah, well, I don't see any problem with that. <laughs> what kind of candy is it? Those are delicious. Yeah, I don't even know what they taste like. They're really, they're just sweet. They're red. They're made by the same people that make, like, Sour Patch Kids and things. But I've just gotten addicted to them so much so that I know where to buy them. And I mm. know what stores don't carry sweetest fish. <laughs> so you won't, you'll won't boycott those stores. Yes, yes, absolutely. And, and do you I like just, do you like the little Swedish fish or the larger ones? I think I like the little ones better. And have you tried the ones that come in the different flavors? Yeah, I, I just like the red. I'm with you. It's not the same thing. I can't, the yellow, not so good. The green, I'm not interested. It's all about the red ones. Yeah, and my husband doesn't understand at all. He thinks that I'm completely crazy. <laughs> do you want one right now? I do want one right now. <laughs> I just bought some because um, I was going past the store that I know that had them. So, um, but I haven't opened the bag yet. So, yeah. Well, go ahead and open the bag right now. Okay. Yeah, let's hear. Yeah, can you can you get to the bag now? Oh, the, yeah, um, let's see. <laughs> mm, they're oh, really. You never had any, Anthony. You don't know no, what they are? No, I have no oh, they're idea delicious because it's not, it's not cherry flavored. It's it's like it has its own unusual flavor. It's it's closer to a <laughs> strawberry flavor than a cherry flavor. Shh, 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 shh. Yeah. It's... <laughs> I'm having trouble opening the bag. <laughs> oh, yeah, I brought, open that bag up. Two bags. So Are you I'm driving not. at the same time? Oh, no, I know. I'm stopped. Okay, good. Stopped, so. oh, she's got two bags. Yeah, well, I brought a ba- a big bag of the little ones and then a small bag of the big ones. <laughs> you really want one, and don't they, you? And they, taste, they taste just as good as I knew they would, so. Go ahead and taste one now. Oh, yes, I'm chewing. <laughs> <laughs> very good, very good. See, now, now you would be called an enabler, Anthony. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but she's happy though. So so how can I be that? She's happy. I made her happy. Is it ruining your marriage? Is everybody happy at your house? Yes, everyone's fine. My husband just thinks I'm a little bit nuts. <laughs> <laughs> See, I think you know, I think that's an okay addiction. Well sometimes they'll be up and I just I just need a sweetest fish fix and I have to leave and go get some and he doesn't understand, but he has his own addictions, so you know, What does he like? What's he addicted to? Well, he's like the collar 
that just you just spoke to about video games. Mm-hmm. He, yeah, he, the Call of Duty, all of that. But he also loves the um, the football games, mm-hmm. uh, especially the NCAA. Uh huh. Spend hours creating his own team. <laughs> oh, th- you know, I'm telling you, you player. you and I are married to the same guy. And then there's there's one that now you can you can play as yourself. And so you you're you're a character essentially, and you, and you go through college like you get recruited as a high schooler, and then you go mm-hmm. and you play. And so he comes down and tells me about his experience as if it's real, <laughs> as if it really happened. Yeah, like, I don't <laughs> care about your fake college football experience. Just hand me the candy and shut up. Oh yeah, and, that's what I say. And Shanley, and Shanley can't wait to show me, like, at, you know, when he gets to the pros, you know, the apartment that he gets to buy, and the car he gets to drive, and the clothes he gets to wear. Because you know, at, at, in the end, not only do you get to play the game, but you get all the spoils of it. Yeah, like you yeah. realize it's totally fake, right? That you're not actually this person. I but, don't know about that. I don't think I they realize it. I need to buy this. I don't think they realize it, Adair. <laughs> I think you know. Wow. See, my husband's doing he's the same like, thing. And he's, um, there's, there's, a, there's a video game store where you can take your old games and you're finished with them, and they give you a discount on any new games that you buy. Mm-hmm. So, you know, he'll sneak in a new video game, and I'll say, you know, I know that's a new game. And he'll say, oh, well, no, I took my other game back, and, you know, so they give me a discount. <laughs> that makes it better at all. Right, like, so, like that's fine now. Hand yeah. me the Swedish fish. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> 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 well, thank you, Adair. Thank you for calling. You know, so so we're asking, what is something that you are addicted to that there should be a treatment plan for? Eight seven seven six Cooper. Hi, Victoria. Hi, how are you, Victoria? What's something you're really into, and maybe you might have an addiction? Nestle's Quick. <laughs> oh, big, I mean, big time, Cooper. Big time. Yeah, that's delicious. I buy the, um, it's about two and a half pound container. <laughs> a local store has it for five ninety nine on sale right now. I've already bought four because they're on sale. <laughs> yeah, well, they're on sale, so you have to. Well, yes, or I can go to a big chain um, commercial store and buy bigger ones, and it costs me $13 for two. I will buy one of these, um, put in anywhere between four and six, tablespoons. <gasps> so you like with, it really, really chocolatey. With a glass of skim milk. Mm. That is my breakfast. I will come home at lunch and have that maybe with whatever I'm having for lunch. Right. I will come home from work and have a small glass. It's like and a slim before, fast for you. Part, then before I go to bed, I'll have another glass with a Pop-Tart. <laughs> <laughs> because it's only best with a raspberry Pop-Tart. But I can go through one of, I can go through one of these in about Four to five days tops. Oh, I go wow. through so much. It's I don't even like to eat the powder. I love it. It's like people have addictions to cigarettes or, or uh-huh. as you said, Coca Cola. Yeah. Mine is Nestle's Quick. That is my cigarette in the morning along with my coffee, right there, all wrapped up in one. Yeah. See, when I see the cigarette people, I go, I don't understand that. Yours, I completely understand. Oh, thank you. I and I love that you do it with skim milk. Good for that. Shows some <laughs> restraint. Well, I think it started because my when my mother back in the '60s, she was addicted to Coca Cola, mm-hmm. and we kids would like to get the bottom of the of the soda bottle, but we were never allowed to have it, which was probably that real cocoa that we were getting, right? The real syrupy spent, on the bottom, mm-hmm. and that now tends into the Nestle's Quick. Is that not the funniest thing? That's so interesting. I, I love that you've analyzed yourself and figured <laughs> this out. My <laughs> friends are like. She's going home and have a Nestle's Quick for lunch. Just let her go. Yeah, so like, yeah that is my drug. That is my drug of choice. As I, re- I refer to it as my drug of choice, and it is the funniest thing. And I drink it. I am never without it. I am never without my Nestle's Quick and my skim milk. If I go away for the night... You'll take I'll, it with you? I, I'll all comes my baggie of Nestle's, <laughs> of Nestle's Quick. And, and I go to the store and get a little container of my skim milk. Oh, yes. It's, I'm never without it. And Never. do you like it when it when it like the chocolate settles on the bottom and it's like you get to eat that bottom part? Well, after I have my last swig in the morning and there's mm-hmm. that little bit in the bottom, mm-hmm. I set the cup down. I'm so anal. I set the cup down, then all the inside will go to the bottom, and I can get one more little sip out. Of it. <laughs> that is perfect. And you don't <laughs> you like, have a system. And you don't like the pre-mixed chocolate milk, huh? 
No, 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 no. Oh, no. Oh, I don't oh, like. The, it's not the I don't same. I like to go to a restaurant and order chocolate milk. I don't like the chocolate kind that you can buy at the grocery store. Oh, no. I don't like um, Ovaltine. I don't like Hershey syrup. I don't. I'm to a dating myself. Bosco. You know, I don't like any right. of that kind of stuff. Yeah, it's, it's not the same. This is quick has its own unique flavor. That once you're in, you're in. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, if they, Victoria, if they start a treatment plan for people that are on Nesquik, I mean, Nestle's Quick, I'll let you know. I don't want to go. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see. See, that's the first problem. Doesn't, doesn't want to admit there's a problem. <laughs> first line of addiction. <laughs> now, Janet, what is something that you used to be addicted to? I used to be addicted to Pepsi. And, and, drank- and you no longer are? Well... I started having problems with my stomach, and I went to my doctor. Mm-hmm. He said, you have to get off of this. And I said, oh, well, I, you know, I love this stuff. And he said, well, I'll tell you what. I'm done treating you for ulcers, which are <laughs> ulcers from oh, drinking Pepsi. But he said, the next time your car battery it won't turn over because it's all clogged up with the battery acid on the on the post, he said, mm-hmm. just go in and get a bottle of Pepsi and dump on it. <gasps> About a year later, that happened, and I was by myself, and I had, to, I had to go to work, and I didn't know what to do. So I went in, and I still had Pepsi, and I got it and took it out and poured it, and it ate the acid <gasps> totally off my battery. Post. Oh, that, that's a great experiment. So, so did, that turn, did that change you? Did you stop oh, drinking Pepsi after that? Absolutely. Yeah, but now I'm hooked on gummy lifesavers. <laughs> oh, my God. They Traded one so, addiction for another. They are so good. Gummy life. I could eat the whole bag. They are awesome. You and Adair should hang out and have a gummy party. I, I'd be there. <laughs> now, wait, Janet, did you ever try diet Pepsi? Did that, did that help? It's all the same. It's the acid. It's not oh. the caffeine. It's the acid. Mm, yeah, all, see, the, all the all the soda pops have. I can't even drink soda pop now. It's just so much acid and all of it and carbonation. It's amazing when you pour that on. When I poured that, I couldn't believe it. It it just fizzed up. And next thing I know, I looked and all that green battery acid. Was <laughs> you gone. thought that's my stomach. That's what car my stomach started, looks like on the outside. Yeah. yeah. Car started and went to work. <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that'll get you right off it. See, yeah, and that's called cognitive behavior, behavioral therapy. That's what they do. There's two ways they treat addiction. One way is, you know, you can go to a 12-step program and get therapy and that kind of thing. But the best therapy is um, called CBT, and that's where you do stuff like that. You do stuff that, like, sort of wakes you back into the, oh, my God, is that really, is this really it kind of thing. You know what I mean? Like, if you're addicted to something, they, um, they, they teach you those kind of things about it. Or they, like the cognitive behavioral therapy, the idea is that you face your fear. You get right in there, mm. you know, kind of thing. I'm going to put French toast on my battery and see what that does. I'm guessing it'll just cook a little darker Oh, is all. It'll probably just cook if the engine's running. I'll just tape it right to your butt. <laughs> well, yeah, you might as well. <laughs> say, might I'll as look well. at that in the mirror. That's what it's going to look like in two weeks. <laughs> With the French toast on your butt. See, you want that? Just bring in cottage cheese and say, that's what it's going to look like. <laughs> no, that's what it already looks <laughs> that like. That French toast, that's true, it is what it already looks like. You know, it's too late. I already have it. You can't get rid of cellulite. Once you have it, you have it. What am I going to do? I'm just going to eat more French toast. <laughs> Party. Hi, Mrs. J. Hi. Mrs. J, what is something yeah. that you are addicted to and there should be a treatment plan for? I heard you ask me out. <laughs> Yeah, he has to do that. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I've got to actually because uh, Jay reminded me of one I was on hold. But the one I called about is Word Twist on Facebook. Yes. And you know what? And you're not only addicted to Word Twist, you're a dealer. (laughs) (laughs) You go get other people involved in your addiction. Yeah. Your husband. (laughs) (laughs) I know. I know. Whenever I see him, he's he's either on the PlayStation playing like his uh, Call of Duty or whatever, or he's on Facebook with you playing Word Twist. That's right. That's yeah. proof he's not always on the PlayStation. Oh yeah, for the yeah for the other few minutes he's on Word Twist with you. Either way, he's mm-hmm. not with me. But the second addiction is the Cooper Lawrence show. Oh Aww. well, that's not bad. I have no problem with that. <laughs> <laughs> Would you want to go to a treatment plan for that? Some sort of treatment center. Well, you know, when you start having withdrawals during the week of Christmas and New Year's because you have to listen to Best Of. 
<laughs> Can you I'll imagine just give you my room? number. It would you be, just call me at home, Mrs. J. It would be J, Mrs. J, and Ken. It, it's like, hi, my name is J. Ah, ah, I'm addicted. <laughs> that's <Aunt>. right. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll just, I, that's fine. So, so from now on, whenever we take a night off, I'll give you my number. You can call me. All right. <laughs> we'll have our own conversation. <laughs> we'll do the show together okay. on the phone. <laughs> hey, Carlene. Hey, Cooper. How are you? Now, Carlene, can you relate to this woman in Sweden that has this addiction to, to Coca-Cola? You know, it's funny. I do, but I have to say, I'm sad to say, I missed the first 10 minutes of your show, and I turned it on, and you were talking about what you're addicted to, and immediately I was like, oh, I'm addicted to Diet Coke. And then when you came back from commercial, I heard you talking about regular Coke, and I had no idea about that story. I was just calling you anyway. Yes, yeah, isn't that funny? Because that's because they they have a treatment center now, a treatment <laughs> clinic. It's a special yeah. addiction treatment clinic, and they're they're there to treat people that have addiction to Coca Cola. Right. I need to go. I'm addicted to Diet Coke, especially Fountain Diet Coke. Like I will go to McDonald's or drive through. Like I know, I know mm-hmm. who has better Fountain right. Diet Coke than uh-huh. other places. <laughs> it's like it's like stopping at a Starbucks for somebody who drinks coffee like at least once or twice a day. But I. Heidi asked me on the phone, like, well, how often do you drink it? And I'm like, well, it's 7 o'clock, and I've drank it all day. Like, I have had nothing else to drink (laughs) all day other than Diet Coke. And the sad thing is, is the other lady who said about the Pepsi, you know, I tell people all the time, like, my New Year's resolution was to stop, you know, or limit one a day the Diet Coke. And they're like, oh, well, diet, it's fine. And I'm like, it's so bad for you, like, what it does for your insides. Uh I was like, if they can take the rust off a penny, like, (laughs) I'm happy with it. I must say. <laughs> well, now, but but here's the thing. Now, now I love the fact that you, like a true addict, you know where the good stuff is. Right, I do. I really do. <laughs> you know, and, you know where the, where the more <laughs> syrupy. Do you like the more syrupy ones? Yeah, I do. Yes, mm. yes. And you know, and all the time, like my husband just laughs at me, like the lady with the Swedish fish. Like I'll be like, you know, you're on your way home. I'm like, oh, I really love a fountain diet coke, even if we have regular diet coke in the house. <laughs> Right. I'm like, oh, I'd really like it. It's <laughs> <laughs> That's sad, I know. You would and install to... a fountain in your kitchen if you could. Oh, my God. I will. Oh, my God. That would be the best idea ever. That would be great. <laughs> <laughs> that would be great. It started out as like, oh, the caffeine in the morning because I don't drink coffee, and now mm-hmm. it's an all-day mm. thing. But I must say, I am addicted to your show as well because, obviously, I call all the time now, and now I just say, oh, I talk to Cooper. Like, you're my best friend. And it would be, we are BFF. <laughs> <laughs> you, I mean, but, but Carlene, but that's a very good point because, you know, I mean, frankly, I don't really have an, if you listen to the show, you know, I don't have any friends left. So thank God for you. No, I'm serious. Thank God for you guys. This is, this is my human interaction. Uh, I, I well, mean, I'm so grateful. Sweet. Well, that's me. Yeah. I mean, in the beginning, it's, oh, I called the Cooper Lawn show and I talked and now it's like, oh, I'll talk to Cooper. <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh, yeah, I heard from Carlene today. Everything's cool. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Everything's good in my world. Spoke to Carlene, spoke to Mrs. J. Everything's good. I'm good. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I hear you. But I think, you know, that's what I think that's what friendships become. You know, you, you do talk every day. Mm-hmm. Those are your closest friends, the people you talk to every day. And I don't really I don't have that anymore since I was in high school Yeah, because I've alienated everybody since then. I've, I've stopped taking your calls. <laughs> yes, you have. <laughs> but no, I pay you to talk to me every day. So you have to. Yeah. And if I don't pick up my phone, I get that. Where are you at? Yeah, because the truth is, if you left here and went to work somewhere else, you'd never take my calls ever again. <laughs> I'd never hear from you, you. On every one of my phones. <laughs> you, would, you would block me. <laughs> Email. You'd send me the junk the junk file, the yep. spam file. Of course you would. <laughs> Rick, what are you addicted to? Well, um, first I want to say, uh, I know everyone's throwing in that they're addicted to your show. Okay, is, yeah, I know. It's a bunch of crap. I understand. No, I, I want to say I was addicted to the show until about a half hour ago when I kind of caught someone talking about taping French toast to your butt. <laughs> and I just want to say, let me say, I'm an open-minded person. You're mm-hmm. extremely attractive. That was just a little too much. So, Yeah, Anthony. Addiction. Well, that's where it goes anyway. You yeah, might as well just tape it right there and you can see it. it. It was the visual. And again, please, no offense. <laughs> please. None taken, Rick. Thank you. So I'm over that addiction. So I'm left with buffalo wings. Oh, and I, and I just love buffalo wings. I've thought about this. I've had some time while I was on hold, and it's like a religion. Like the first time I saw someone eating them was about eighteen. That was like the first time you heard the gospel. Right. It took a little while, <laughs> and then when I ate them for the first time, like a year later, that was like my conversion. Right. You know, it was like a, it was a religious experience. It was. It was truly a religious experience, and it's the only food much like your. Um, French toast. It's the only food I've ever had in 42 years old that I could eat it and the sa- later that day, yeah. Someone wants to go for wings? Hell yeah, I'm there. Uh, I'm there, yeah. 
You know, there's, there's no, anything else you eat, you have Chinese for lunch, someone goes, you want to go for dinner? No, I just had Chinese food, right? Yeah, exactly. I just ate. What are you talking about? <laughs> or Mexican. We went for Mexican yesterday, you idiot. We're not going today. No. Buffalo <laughs> wings, I could do every day. And I've got to tell you one, one quick anecdote. I remember a friend of mine, I'm still friends with him, it's like 20 years ago when we kind of discovered him. We were mm-hmm. doing our conversion experience. Right. <laughs> and we used to get him at a t- place, and they came in, you know those foil circular um, things like you, you could take out at, a, at an Italian place, they give it yes. to you. Yes, know, right. That's where they came in. So we had got them to go, and we was eating them, and they were in like an inch of sauce. And he's choking Ooh. them down. And eating wings is an experience. That's part of, I think, why people like them. It's, it's an experience to eat a, a buffalo wing. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, because it's not, just, it's not just food that you eat, and that's it. I mean, you've got to deal with it. There's sauce. There's the, there's exactly. the, the um, blue it's cheese. A, it's a system. That, yeah, you've got bones. You've got to get that meat off the bone. Exactly. Right. So he's, he's choking them down and just truly... This would be like speaking in tongues, the part of the religious experience. And, he's eating them and when, I'll never forget this. When he was done, he was so, like, caught up in it, he reached down, two hands, cupped the sauce, and drank it. Oh! Now, he, he should be, he's like an evangelist. He's like, he's like a missionary. <laughs> it's, so yeah, exactly. Uh, that's, that's, I mean, it is, and, and it's like, yeah, it's like the... Um, the sauce part is almost like that's the religious experience because, you know, a wing is just a wing. You can do anything with it. It's the sauce Absolutely. you put it in. It is, I think it's a combination of that tangy sauce, which is so good, and mm-hmm. certain foods aren't experienced. I just left having sushi about half hour ago. I think part of why people like sushi is it's an experience to eat sushi. Right. Not just sticking something in your mouth. It's, it's something involved. I think that's kind of therapeutic. I like that, and I think wings are very similar. Do you do the, do you do the blue cheese and the whole cyst, the whole thing? do and i went from you i used to think that was like blasphemy like the people that dip in them like <laughs> the religious seems a little too much here but and then now i'm a complete yeah dip it in the blue cheese all yeah, about it so. yeah see i am just i i can relate i can understand your 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 buffalo wing thing i mean that's how i feel about french toast i have to sit down there has to be silence i do a little say a little prayer over it first you know i, mm. I thank god for giving me my french toast and for letting me discover french toast yeah, I didn't realize. I didn't realize this was out there. Then stick it right to your butt. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> but, but then I missed the whole good taste of it. Oh, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. oh, oh. Emily, if there was a treatment plan for, for your specific addiction, what would that plan be? Uh, for you who? For you who? How much do you drink a day? Um, I drink one before I leave for school, and then I drink one for breakfast at school, and then I drink <laughs> like two at lunch. And I drink a few whenever I get home, and I make sure I drink one before I go to bed. <laughs> you make wow. sure. It's on your itinerary. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and, and does anybody stop? Has anyone said to you, like in your family, said, you know, Emily, the Yoohoo is a little much already? Well, they tell me it's unhealthy and I should, you know, slow down, but I, I love it so much. Because, you know, because they know, like anyone else who's addicted, you'd be sneaking it. If they said no and they took it out of the house, mm-hmm. you would buy it on the black market. Yeah. <laughs> Be sneaking it into school, stop it on street corners. <laughs> it's good. It's good that they, they keep it at home at least. <laughs> hey, Quentin. What's up, everybody? Are you married yet? Jar <laughs> <laughs> Jar Quentin, and, and, so, did somebody marry you yet? Um, well, it's uh, set for uh, uh, sometime next year. Oh, wow. Sometime next year. You don't know the exact date. Sometime yeah. next year. Yeah. At some point. Crap. I'm just like, whatever. I, I, I bought this. <laughs> 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 but um, that's actually it's funny you bring that You play Chewbacca because that's, um, me and my friends, they were just taking on me for um, they need to make a 12 step plan for Star Wars tattoos. Yeah. How many do you have so far? Um, I have one that my mother knows about, and I hope she's not listening to the show. Nah, and she doesn't listen to the show. Mm hmm. I have six total, and I plan on getting more. Wow. Now, you have one that she knows about. How do you hide the other five? Um, I don't really walk around shirtless, and she can't really see my legs because um, two of them are on my, uh, my thighs. Uh-huh. And then the other one, um, one of them's on my back, and then the other one, um, the other ones are on my side, and then on my, I have one on my calf. Now, who's, who's on your thigh? On my thigh? Yeah. Um, I have Boba Fett on my thigh. You know, the, the <laughs> picture, like um, one of the autograph pictures of Boba Fett on my thigh. On my right, of thigh. course. And then um, I just have a uh, kind of a, it's a, another Mandalorian 
kind of tribal looking thing on my uh, my right thigh. And the first time your fiance has she has she seen them? Does she know you even have them? Yes, she knows. You know, I speak Mandalorian fluently. I'm a big Star Wars nerd. It's horrible. Mm. <laughs> and but yet she's she marrying you anyway. Me. That's quite a woman. Yeah, I, you give it to her. She loves me. That's all I care about. So, how many more are you getting? Um, I I don't know. I want to get um, I want to make the one that's on my it's on my left uh my left pec muscle. Mm-hmm. I want to make that turn into a uh, potentially a full sleeve on my left arm. Nice of Star Wars stuff. I gotta say that's gonna look really cool. Mm. Something to do. Something to spend a lot of money on, but I love it. You know what? It's Anthony. Once you get one, dude, you're addicted, man. Well, I know. I I I can't stop now. Yep, you can't. And people told me that, and I'm just like, nah, I'll get one and be done. Mm, um, Quentin, Quentin, don't let Anthony fool you. He's He has one tattoo, and every time he goes back, he gets another thing on it done because he's a big baby, and he can't th- sit through the whole process. That was an hour and a half last uh, last Friday. <laughs> hour and, and a half in the chair. Yes, that's and 45 good? minutes was you crying. Oh, that's Right. You let her talk to you like that, man? <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's true. Look at the pictures. <laughs> it's true. I'm not making this up. I cry like a little girl. I'm the first one to admit it. I. It's painful, but I love it. <laughs> it's you have six tattoos. He has one that's taken him about six, six hours. Six different times, yeah. Yeah, six different times. Yeah, exactly. Thank you, Quentin. All right, so this should be a treatment plan for your addiction to what? What are you addicted to? 8776 Cooper. How about you, Susan? Hi, Cooper. Hello. Uh, well, I tell you, I first found out about this when I was scuba diving. Mm-hmm. And somebody on the boat brought some dried mangoes. Interesting. And had you had one before? No. No, I'd had mangoes, but not dried mangoes. But they tasted so great when they were mixed with salt water, you know, oh. diving. And, and then they were so sweet. And I thought, these are fabulous. Well, I was safe. But then they started carrying them at my health food store in oh. And they're really good because there's there's no, you know, chemicals or anything. And so they're really good for you within reason. Right. So, uh, so you can't be addicted if it's good for you. Oh, yes, you can. <laughs> they're so good. And if whatever whatever amount I go in bulk and buy, mm-hmm. I eat them all the <laughs> time. Even, even if I eat part of the bag and go home and put the bag up, I'm back in the bag. 